Do you want to know how to hack a password? Do you want to become a password cracker? Well, wait no longer because today I'm showing you five ways on how you can hack a password. Hello world, my name is Zenit, penetration tester and software developing intern, currently studying part-time computer science and today I'm showing you how to hack some passwords. By the way, if this is your first time here and you like what I'm showing you or are interested in more hacking related content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Warning. This video is for educational purposes. Never hack a system without permission. A little refresher on what hashes are. Because as you might know, passwords usually are not stored in plain text in a database. Or at least they shouldn't. They are also not encrypted. Or at least they shouldn't. They are hashed. Or at least they should. What is a hash? Well. I asked a friend, Satonic, which is also doing hacking related content on YouTube, to explain it because, well, he already did a video on it and I just stole his content and I asked him nicely if I can steal it. So I basically just stole his content, but I asked him nicely and he even said, yes, of course you can. Check him out as well, link in the description. A hashing algorithm is a complex mathematical function that transforms a string of data into a seemingly random output string of fixed length. For example, these words produce the following hashes. The same input string will always produce the same output string, but if the input string is changed even by just a single character, then the output string will be entirely different. Hashing is often seen as a form of one-way encryption, as you cannot go backwards from a hash to work out the original string, you can only go forwards. This is great for storing passwords. Instead of storing the actual password, the hash of the password is stored. When a user enters their password at login, it is hashed and compared to the hash in the database. If they're the same, then the login is successful. This way, if an attacker gains access to the database, they'll only have the hashed passwords, which in theory will be of no use to them as they won't be able to go backwards to figure out the original password. Brute force attack is the simplest method to crack a password. It also takes the longest time. You just try out every combination that is possible and wait. I'll show you how you do it. You first need to install a cracking tool. I've already done this. My cracking tool is called John, John the Ripper. For this and all the following examples, we will generate a hash for the password test with some salt in it, which will be the first one and we are simulating that this would be the admin's password and we are giving that into a password file and you can just enter john and pass pass being the password file hit enter and then you wait you can press any key for to see your current status and you can see that he, he's basically trying to brute force everything around now this is not a really efficient strategy a more elegant approach would be if we could feed some words or hints into this brute forcing algorithm and make it a little bit faster this is something we call a dictionary or word list attack for a word list attack you need a word list Now I'm gonna do a really fast one, we are going to use a word list I just created which has the contents of test, win words, test, test2 and now we use this in John, we're just going to use the word list words and the password file pass, we execute it, we wait it and depending on your word list, it can also be almost instantaneously. To get the password, we use john dash dash show and the password file. Amazing, he found out that it was test provided with a word list with test in it. Now there are a couple of word lists out there. The most famous one would be the rockutxt, which is 
from a password dump that was made a while back. I'm not too familiar with the background story there, but it has real passwords and so it's real data to play around with. Another method would be a rainbow table attack. Passwords mostly are hashed. Now a rainbow table is the same as a word list but with one difference. It's not just a list, it's a table and you have a word and the hash that corresponds to this word. You can do practically the same as with a word list but you don't need to hash the words so it goes a lot faster. You just can match two hashes that are identical and then find the word that it's kind of like a lookup table. However, these rainbow tables take a lot of space and I don't have that kind of space, especially not on my VM where I have like 10 gigs or 15 gigabyte and the rainbow tables can be almost half a terabyte or a terabyte. Number four on the list is a hack that doesn't require any technical skill at all. It's called social engineering. Now, social engineering, you have a couple of different options. You could write an email. Hello, Mr. Target, I'm from tech support and I need your password to help. So you can write the phishing mail like that. What you also could do is something called shoulder surfing. This is basically when someone types their password into the keyboard and you just stand right behind them and are like, hmm, okay, I can see what you're typing. This is called shoulder surfing. The last type is actually similar to the brute force attack I just mentioned or the word list attack. It's when you wanna hack a Wi-Fi password, you cannot you cannot just brute force the route. What you have to do is to capture a handshake and then brute force this handshake. If you want to have it in more detail, you can check out the playlist over here, which is of videos that I made that are about Wi-Fi hacking.